Change bridge, my friends. Today I'm in the capital of Udmurtia Republic in Izhevsk. And I want to make today a little excursion about this city. And I want to start it, first of all, in the most criminal place of Izhevsk, in the Bumash neighborhood. And slowly but surely we'll go to the city center of it. Let's go to explore it. Izhevsk is the capital of Udmurtia Republic. Here is total population approximately 600 to half thousands of people. And it's really interesting, but Udmurts is not the main nation of uh, this city. The main nation in this city is Russians. Here is living approximately six, uh, 60 hundreds of Russians, uh, 50, 15, uh, 15 persons of Udmurts, and even 10 persons of Tatars. Yeah, Tatars living everywhere in Russia. Local economy mainly consists of mechanical engineering. Here is working the subsidiary of the Lada, and here is uh, making the Lada Viester, Iz uh, was making Iz, and earlier it was making in our models of the Lada, and even here was the assembling of uh, Kia models, especially Kia Sarenta and Kia Spectra maybe. Generally, it was nine large manufacturers in Izhevsk, and more about the history of foundation of Izhevsk, I tell you a little bit later when we walk to the downtown of it. But now we are working in Bumash neighborhood. It's like it is very close to this plant of Bumash uh, in Russian. Zavod Bumaga Delitelemo Machine Strayenia, or uh, here is making the special mechanics for pulp and paper mill. So I heard from the locals and from the people who was in Izhevsk that uh, Bumash neighborhood is the most dangerous uh, part of the city. But from my perspective, so I, I walk by this neighborhood right now and here is nothing dangerous actually. Maybe all dangerous people uh, went to touch us, but now here is no one who may be dangerous and here is so clean streets uh, yes it's not maybe such a pretty quarter but as usual as usual old soviet neighborhood bumash located extremely on the city's edge after is only natural forests but we are going into the opposite side closer and closer to a downtown When you're walking by street, you can explore such houses, so very new houses for Izhevsk. And on the opposite side of the street, you can explore such wooden houses everywhere. It's very a lot of such streets in Izhevsk. How is it going? So, in one street, absolutely different types of houses. Magnificent. So, wooden houses again. And look at this neighborhood. New skyscrapers. This is the city Ratusha. Usually it's staying in the center of city in Russia, but not in Izhevsk. One more feature differs Izhevsk out of our Russian cities. Here is outstanding design of new houses. That's really good and it's more curious when such houses neighbor with old wooden buildings. Udmurts approve our dumplings are region from Udmurts cuisine and it's gonna be tough because uh, dumplings in Russian language like, would be like uh, pelmeni and it's very similar with uh, Udmurts language. Uh, it will be in Udmurts language, it will be like pelnan uh, or uh, translated in English like uh, uh, ears of a bread 
and so let's try it here is very very different colors of uh, dumplings and they are dark made with uh, from the beet some some of these made of a carrot and some of these made of a dish with spinach let's try it i think it will be tasteful where is my fork So insertion and yummy. Ijevsk's history of foundation very typical for Euro and it was founded in the middle of 18th century in the 60s but Ijevsk itself located not in the Euro it's on the border between the Euro and East European plain and but what was the reason to found the city here uh, the reason the main reason of the foundation was enormous amount of uh, iron deposits in the Ural but local factories couldn't even cope the volume of iron processing in on the local factories itself and it was a new decision to found the city on the East River to make here a new uh, iron processing manufacture. Water reservoir in the city is a typical stuff for Ural towns. It's a remain of industrial growing in the past. Ijevsk industry consists of not only metallurgy. Here is a high developed armor manufacturer. Here is even worked Mikhail Kalashnikov, inventor of Kalashnikov armor. And he lived in Ijevsk till the day. And local iron manufacturers supplied Petersburg armory, uh, Tulus and Bryansk armory in center of Russia. And it was a risk. In in the 19th century, it was a risk when you uh, war with Napoleon France, what made Russian government to found the new armory in Ijevsk uh, to increase the volume of, produ of production of armory. And here was the three main reasons to to found here in Ijevsk new uh, manufacture of armors. The third, uh, the first, the first one is here is here is already the production of iron. The second reason here is a lot of forests, uh, that is here is a lot of uh, timber, uh, really need for production of armor and weapon. And the third, I think that's the main reason was that Ijevsk located where really remote in a really remote area from the uh, center of Russia, from the Moscow, that is uh, if Napoleon conquered Moscow and Petersburg, he will not get the uh, armor from Ijevsk. In 18th and 7th year, local Euro Milchant Andrei Durabin was instructed to build and develop here the new uh, weapon manufacture. And the first half of 19th century, it was developing uh, this plan. And particularly, this building beside me uh, was constructed in the 10th and uh, 30th years of uh, the same century. And this building was the first. Uh, industrial monument of culture for Russian Empire uh, but unfortunately nowadays it's abandoned uh, but sometimes in Russian Empire it was it was built absolutely great and rich uh, houses even in the industry In our time, local water reservoir transformed into a place for pleasure of local citizens. Ijevsky reservoir and its embankment are the main places for attraction in Ijevsk.
Despite the quantity of beautiful churches in Izhevsk, Udmurts are pagans mainly, as in other Finno-Ugric nations. After conquest of Kazan by Russia in 1552, that started massive Christianization of minorities in Middle Volga republics. So, to find out more about Udmurt culture, better go to the nearby village of Ludervai, in 15 kilometers from this city. We came to Ludorvai village, but why we came here? We came here for playing Quidditch. My new name is 2000. Let's go, Gryffindor! <laughs> Potter, catch me! Potter, catch me! Catch me! Catch me! Oh! <laughs> I think you know what winter. Winter in Russia is really severe, and this is special stuff. It's a special boot made of a uh, sheep's wool and uh, people in Russia used it for, for going into winter so it's, I think it's very very warm stuff who should be wow, wonderful it's a really, really good one uh, clothes for, go for walking in village when it's going very really really severe frozen wow 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 Вы можете меня сфоткать, раз вы фотограф, на мой телефон двоих, пожалуйста? Да, конечно, а могу вас сфоткать. Кто приходит и неправильно фоткают, одну меня берут. Давайте сфоткаем вас. Возьмите, пожалуйста, вот разные фото и портреты, можно их Давайте, даже давайте. Угу. Ну вот, а сейчас мы будем наряжать. Наряжать, наряжать. Я вот эту сейчас ткань приготовлю. А здесь узелочек можно сделать налево, вот на левом боку. Это защита сердца и души нашей. То есть это получается такой берег, это и южные удмурты делали, и северные удмурты, да, так делали? Это делали практически все народы мира, только угу. из чего делали? И север делали из шкур, и чтобы лица, лицо не было похоже на своих предков, на, на родственников, чтобы они не умерли, они сушили головы птиц и с клювом пришивали. Вот таких кукол угу. делали. Значит, делали еще другие куклы из ткани, когда ткани появились, они были очень дорогими, прямо складывали ткани, которые потом передавались прямо мать, передавала дочери, дочь своим детям передавала. Вот, вот как, слишком длинную сделала, надо было сантиметров двадцать его, ну ладно, крути, крепче далее будет. А это вот здесь такие травяные сборы собирали, да? А, лаванда это из дома. Все, что тут есть, я это, значит, собираю и делаю фитоковрики. Фитоковрики, фитоковрики. вот они выглядят именно так. Но тут а, вчера вот я нашла это тысячелистник, вот сегодня тысячелистник не, не нарезала, и э, валерьяну вот там около речки. И для чего и, это делают? Э, фитоковрики, они тоже как оберег, и еще их можно и в туалет. Вот один мужчина все время про туалет, я тоже начала туалет говорить. В ванную, в душ, э, в детскую мята, все, что вот есть, тушистое такое. Энергетика этих трав, она очень огромная. Если ты ее собираешь именно с любовью, что знаю, я вот именно туда и повешу, то значит ты собираешь точно так же, как куклы ты собираешь. Точно так же. Вот сейчас цветет липа. Энергетика липы огромная от того, что и, и жар понижает, и отхаркивающая лечебная. Я все тут лечебная, это сердечная. Я все принесла не Это пустырник, да? Да, пустырник. Nature in Indmurtia absolutely nice. Here is gonna be a new natural area, Taiga. So Siberia and Ural are going to be closer, that is uh, nature uh, transforming more severe and more severe again. Uh, here is beginning such plants like a spurs, sphere, it's going to be more pine. In general, uh, broad leaves forests and
tent made for grass. It's a fake tent, but it's looking pretty interesting. I first time even see it in Russia. So what? What's an imagination to make such a construction? And it's re it's really practice. So the temperature here is a little bit cooler than the surrounded area. So nice way to solve a problem if you're very hot. Wow! 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 But what is what a smell here? Here is a real smell of the grass, the fresh grass. Wow, astonishing! So, I'm gonna sleep here. So, bye bye. <laughs> no, we we should to blog in more. Let's go. Let's go to explore it. Lutarvai, wonderful village. Absolutely wonderful village. Try it. Try it. Udarvai, the best village of Udmurtia Republic. Wow. Exploring the kitchen, Udmurt kitchen, how it was looking in the ancient time. Wow, here was a fire and here was a cooking. <laughs> I think it's time to try the Udmurt cuisine here. Let's go here to uh, some for some eating. So first of all, let's, let's begin from the local soap. It's Russian sheep and the more name it's like Yuga. Uh, I don't know how is it translated in Inward language, uh, but in Russian it's sal it sounds like sal. That's right. So just the usual soup made of a cabbage. Just the usual soup like Russians made it. Щи такие же, как обычные щи. Ну, да. <laughs> Local drink, квас. A little bit, uh, a little bit alcohol drink, right? What do you think? Однозначно не скажешь. So usual, so as usual for Russians. But maybe maybe this dish come from the Udmurt cuisine actually in Russian. Really local local dish for Udmurt. Berry peach. Berry peach is a pie with a cabbage. Try. Mm. Just a dough with a cabbage. And a little bit egg. Interesting, interesting. It's uh, I don't know this uh, this one in Russian cuisine or Tatar cuisine. It's really special for Udmurt cuisine. And the last one. It's like a shine shine Just a dough with a uh, with a with a puree made of a potato. But this is the this is the top. It's like a Russian blintzes, uh, but with uh, with cheese and a little bit of uh, green onion. So interesting. Let's try. Mm. Nice one. Nice one. So, Woodmore cuisine is really special sometimes. Wow, interesting. But, and the last one, drink. Just a local tea. Local tea made of local herbs. For example, from oregano and mind. I think this. Yes, this tea made of oregano and mind. Just wonderful. It's my, one of my favorite tea in Russia. Wow. Ah, we with sugar. I don't like sugar. Yeah. Shaker. <laughs> In Tatar language, shaker is a sugar. <laughs> wow. 
Женатый, не женатый, то в старые добрые времена девушек определяли по головному уровню. Девушка. Не замужняя, но на, на, на выданье. Она говорит, я готова, я. Вот я вам рассказывала. Да, да. Вот про этот э, налобник я вам и рассказывала. Со спины, если впереди налобная повязка, со спины способ завязывания платка говорит о том, что она свободная. Я-то замужем? Вам уже хвост прижали. Хвост уже прижали. А тут-то хвост еще свободный. Она еще пока гуляет. Самая слабая часть женщины – это грудь, которая должна быть всегда защищена. Пульсирующие места. Женщина, мать, которая кормит ребенка. Никогда в старину э, грудь не оголяли, даже если наступал момент кормления ребенка. У, у каждой кормящей женщины был нательный нагрудник под платьем. И когда наступает момент кормления, из-под из -под платья достается нагрудник, и под нагрудником уже корми, кормят женщины ребенка. Ну а когда собираешься на праздник в люди, в мир, в толпу, конечно, себя защищаешь уже нагрудным украшением, которое называется Окшет Перлокудмурская название. Название маниста это, это, это русское название этого нагрудника, но и женщина все равно все же таки все внимание на себя брала женщина. Всегда выбирали женщину, выбирали невесту. И поэтому женщина себя, себя вообще по периметру вокруг, да, полностью себя защищала, оберегала. В первую очередь маниста это первую очередь оберег. Вторую очередь это уже признак достатка. Маниста может быть и 5 килограмм, может быть и всего лишь 2, 2 300. Вау, friends, it's absolutely wonderful place. Лударвай, вау, magnificent village near nearby with Ижевск. Wonderful Republic of Odmurtia, pretty wonderful, wonderful persons, interesting and kindful people. Вау, wow, Удмуртия, magnificent nature, nature and what a smell, what a smell of a meadow in Удмуртия. Absolutely astonishing and tasteful, tasteful cuisine. Wonderful place. Friends, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Woohoo!